Hello folks, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is April 9th, 2021. I'll be talking about one of my favorite stocks. It's Fibrogen or FGen. It's in the healthcare and biotechnology segment. And according to their website, they really try to find the cure uh, for chronic life-threatening conditions such as anemia, um, fibrosis, pancreatic cancer, kidney disease. I think they're trying to do a good job um, they do have some setbacks, as you can expect. Um, and according to the research here, um, you know, this whole fibrosis market, it's expected to grow at a compounded annual growth of 16%, which, which is a very good growth rate here. And this company is trying very hard to take a big share in this market. So with that, let's jump in. Um, what is this company doing? You know, this company is uh, helping with the anemia, associated with the chronic kidney disease or CKD and they have uh, you know multiple things going on they got a chemotherapy induced anemia um, a phase 2 study enrollment completed and they got uh, you know something else here uh, anemia associated with the you know uh, MDS here and also phase 3 is enrolling and this is one of their famous drug here uh, Roxa uh, Dustat I think you know they are really, really they were banking on this. Um, and next comes you know big news. Um, you know I think on Wednesday the stock crashed big time because there was some backtracking of the safety data. Um, that's why you know they put out some statement a while ago saying their drug uh, is doing better um, than um, competition, but looks like the data is tampered and they did not provide the right data. Uh, because of that, you know, their stock has crashed. Um, it also looks like, you know, as you can see, um, they realized they altered the safety data. So uh, that's a big no-no. It's again for their flagship product called Roxa Dostat. So the moment, you know, uh, people, uh, companies like this alter the data, that will raise a big red flag. Um, so they, they also have a partnership with AstraZeneca, which is a big company. Now folks are wondering, you know, is that still on or any issue with this partnership? Um, and, you know, also they're saying, you know, with the, you know, right now they're thinking this, you know, Roxa Dostat, um, it's uh, no longer safer than the standard care uh, when it comes to uh, patients with the dialysis, dialysis need. So... This is why, you know, this drug was supposed to be a very good uh, uh, drug, but now it's no longer better than the competition. So that's why company took a big dive, stock crashed big time. Uh, so let's see if, we, if it's worth investing at this point. So Fibrogen, it's a, you know, um, biopharmaceutical company. They deal with the serious uh, unmet medical needs. Uh, they're into small molecule inhibitor, um, and they also you know, work um, you know with the chronic kidney disease in United United States as well as Europe. Um, their market cap is around 1.72. It's falling as we speak. Right now it's around 1.70, and stock price is around 18 dollars. If you can, as you can see here with the stock chart, stock is really up and down. You know, as these companies especially these pharmaceutical companies, whenever they bring up a new drug, stock kind of goes up in the anticipation. If a FDA um, issue or a red flag, stock drops. As you can see, you're up and down, down and up. So with these type of stocks, especially, um, you know, these uh, biotechnology stocks, I like to invest, you know, when they are down, like right now, right, you know, at this point. So you can wait for a while, have some patience, they will always come back. And you can, um, you know, uh, sell, you know, a little bit at a time as, as it bounces back. But when there is a dip, you can buy again. So I would not invest in these companies for very long term unless you see some earning consistency and some consistent uh, behavior in the stock chart itself. So with that, this company has got a revenue of uh, $176 million, trailing 12 months, um, a good revenue growth. And they got a lot of cash, you know, they can survive easily and a little bit debt, not too much. 
and they do have positive operating cash flow and levered free cash flow. And CEO Enrique, uh, he's a he, he's a industry veteran. He used to be senior vice president of Eli Lilly, and he's uh, he understands you know diabetes and the kidney disease you know from long time. So as a CEO, I think he checks out. He's he's he has got the industry specific experience, so which is which is a good story. And from a news perspective, um, as you can see here on April seventh. Uh, stock is trading lower as CEO admits manipulated safety data for uh, Roxa the stat. So this is why you know the moment you know companies manipulate their data to make uh, to make sure it looks good. That's when the issue comes, um, and um, you know uh, that's why stock is down big time now. It's hard for people to believe this company because uh, they tampered it once. What's the guarantee they won't tamper again? Um, and also, I think um, they also had an earnings miss. This was, uh, you know, a while ago. Um, but, you know, this company typically has a not so good record when it comes to earnings. They typically miss on the uh, revenue number or the, or the EPS number um, multiple times. So now let's go into some of the competition. You know, anytime you go deep dive into a stock, you always have to look at the competition and see how the competitors are doing. As you look at this chart, I will not go through all of these companies in detail, but you know, we have all these companies here set up uh, therapeutics on the top. This company has got a uh, 58% uh, um, uh, decline in last three months. The way this chart is organized is I got all these 27 stocks here and they are um, sorted by um, three month experience, uh, I mean, uh, three month performance. The one on the top is, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, did not perform very well in last three months. And the next one is a little better than that. It's in a ascending order. The one on top is the, you know, um, did not perform well at all. So what I'll be looking at in these companies is really how is uh, the sales growth? As you can see here, Sereptos, it's got one year sales growth of 32%, quarter to quarter 45%. You know, I like those type of growth rates and also nice gross margin. Next is our, our stock that we are talking about today, which is uh, Fibrogen. $18 stock um, and I, you know, from a one year perspective, sales growth is negative, but quarter over quarter it's a positive. Nice gross margin, 95%, and it's not expensive from a price to sales ratio. And they tumbled a lot. As you can see here, this week, they dropped 48%, almost 50% of the value is wiped out in this single week. Um, and they're down 45% uh, for the month. Um, you know, 60% for the year, uh, sorry, six months and 47% for the year. So that's why you got to really see what does this mean? Should I jump in now? Should I wait? That's what we have to think through. And I got multiple other stocks here, PTCT, nice growth here, revenue growth from a one year growth, quarter over quarter growth, nice gross margin. These guys are, all, these guys are also down 31% and so on and so forth. You can just uh, look through this. What I typically do in these companies is really, I look for you know companies which are beaten down, say three months, and uh, showing some sign of improvement in say, in, in one week. For example, here Fibrogen, if I invest now, I'm a contrarian. Even though uh, there is no significant improvement this week, I'm contrarian, meaning I'm investing now and when everybody is uh, worrying too much about this. But along the same lines, if you look at uh, uh, Galacto as an example, $6 stock, it crashed so much in three months and one month, but there is a turnaround in last uh, one week. So in this scenario, you could safely invest a little bit even though sales is zero, they, they don't have any revenue at this point, but stock is kind of turning around. So it, this is a good time to invest in turnaround, turnaround stocks like this. So typically I look at those type of situations where stock fell a lot in last three months and one month. I see some improvements in one week um, and 10 days. That's where you know, it gives me a little more confidence in these uh, companies. 
So with that, now let's uh, go into, I mean, uh, you know, I like many of these stocks, you know, I invest them whenever they fall uh, and crash, I invest in them. And whenever they bounce back nicely, I start taking my profits. I know, you know, this whole uh, biotechnology industry is very difficult industry. These companies try hard, but with the FDA approvals and clin clin clinical stages, it's a uh, very hard for them to consistently, um, you know, be on the top. That's why you got to invest them and trade them. When they bounce back, buy it. When they go up, uh, when they when they crash, buy them. When they bounce back, you know, take some off the table. That's one of the best way to invest in these type of companies. So with that, uh, let's look at Fibrogen now. Let's look at fundamentals of this company. Stock price is eighteen dollars. Market cap is one point six seven billion dollars. And this is a chart where we look at quarter over quarter, how the company is doing. I got uh, 1231, which is uh, the quarter they reported recently, all the way back to 930, 2018. And if you look at the market cap, you know, as you can see here, <laughs> clearly you don't want to invest in this company for the long haul. It bounces back and forth. It was $4.9 billion, $4 billion back in 2018. Now it's uh, three point. Uh, I mean, now it's one point six seven billion. So as you can see here, you know, good one third of the value is lost, and in between, as you can see here, bounces up and down. Four point nine billion, three point nine, four point six, three point nine. It's kind of bouncing, you know, back and forth. That's why I like to invest in you know, buy these stocks when they're down, and you can always hope for a bounce after a very uh, bad correction. And from a price stock price perspective, as you can see, here, same story. Fifty eight dollars back in twenty eighteen uh, became forty six, fifty four, forty five, thirty six. All over the map, it bounces wildly. You know, from a sales perspective, you know, uh, or revenue perspective, it's uh, same story here, up and down, down and up. Um, and off late last uh, three or four um, quarters. I think they're uh, you know consistently going up, um, but now with this drop, we have to watch out. Sales growth, I think nice sales growth last two quarters, 715, 32 percent. I think this is where you know with the, if there is a good indication and a good drug, these companies go up so drastically. But if there is a not a not so good um, um, drug, uh, these companies will tend to crash very hard. From a revenue surprise, this is where I was talking. This company is not consistent in the revenue and the quarterly earnings. As you can see here, last four or five times, company gave a um, negative surprise when it comes to revenue. So Wall Street does not like negative surprises. That's why the stock has not uh, gone nowhere. I mean, there is some growth, but uh, you know, really, um, revenue growth is negative. And from an EPS perspective, earnings per share perspective, as you can see here, they did a negative surprise in the latest quarter, some positive, mostly, you know, many negative. So that's why, you know, you, whenever they miss like this, stock comes down, that will be a good opportunity to buy. They do have good amount of cash, as you can see, $687 million. That's a good enough cash. They can survive easily, low debt. Um, and free cash flow is negative and operating cash flow is also negative. From a gross margin perspective, I think it's a good gross margin. I think it's very nice. Uh, they're not you know, making profit yet. Net margin is negative. Um, and price to sales ratio is manageable. It's uh, you know, not, not very pricey. Um, it's, it's okay to invest. So with that, this is a quick chart. Um, fundamentally, uh, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is, company is not predictable they do miss earning surprises earning numbers they do miss um, earnings per share numbers uh, quite a lot so that's why and stock bounces a lot as you can see here um, you know 20 you know stock price was 58 46 54 45 they're all over the map that's why for this type of companies i would not be investing for the long haul Instead, I will be investing in them or buy, trading them when they're down and taking some off the table as they bounce back. Next, let's look at a monthly performance matrix. The way to read this chart is I got all the years on top, 2021, 2020, and so on and so forth. And I got all the months here, you know, December all the way to January. 
and I got yearly performance, yearly high, yearly low from a stock price perspective. I always try want to look at this chart because that tells me how is the stock doing at the high level. By looking at this, you clearly see uh, 2015 stock crashed so hard, you know, here, um, March, April, May, and again in September, um, and 2016, same story, uh, good double digit crash here, here, here. And you know, you can see a 2018 crash again, 2019 crash, crash, 2020, uh, multiple crashes, 2021, we have a big crash. So this huge crash, 40% in March, 46% in, um, in April, this has not happened before. So this is one of the biggest crash. They do have 20, 29% crash, 33% crash, but 46% crash in uh, hardly like couple days. Um, that's the biggest here. Um, that's why, you know, I like to be a little bit contrarian in these situations and, uh, you know, buy a little bit when they're, um, you know, when they're beaten down so much um, and then, you know, slowly take it off the table as uh, they bounce back. Um, and if you look at the yearly performance, clearly this is not a stock to be investing for your retirement because clearly they have, you know, 11%, minus 29%, it's really all over the map. So you can't invest in these type of stocks for the long haul, but you can always uh, take some profit, um, you know, by investing when they're beaten down so hard. Next, uh, let's look at the insider trading. You know, by looking at the insider trading, I don't see any red flags. You know, these uh, directors are taking some off the table due to option exercise. You know, some of these guys have got really low price, as you can see here, but value is not too much. It doesn't look like they are, you know, you know they are taking advantage uh, of any news leak. It looks like a normal uh, sales these execs make. Um, next, look. Let's look at the technical from a chart perspective. So this is, uh, you know, today's uh, chart. Um, as you can see here, you know, stock crashed really hard. I think on Wednesday, the big uh, gap down, and they crashed again. Huge gap down here again. Um, and if you look at the relative strength index, it you know crossed uh, over sold scenario here. Clearly oversold. I think it has not crossed this line before. Now they clearly, you know, bounced. Uh, I mean, crashed so badly. From an implied wall perspective, implied volatility is now it's kind of dropping off a little bit. But um, you know, uh, right now it's around uh, uh, IV percentile is 55. So I would not be buying call options at this point because IV is a little high to buy call options. Um, but if you really like the stocks, you could buy some you can uh, sell some put option at a lower price um, expecting to buy the stock if it falls to your price for example stock price is at uh, uh, 18 if you want to sell say $15 put or say $17 put something along those lines you could do that uh, you know provided you are willing to buy the stock at that price if it falls to your level uh, from a DMI perspective as you can see here the blue line is below the red line, red, red, red line is spiking up, clearly bearish signal here um, on the balance volume dropped off significantly, uh, which is, uh, you know, very common in case of the crashes like this. And check-in money flow is telling me money is kind of went out of the market, you know, of, of the stock. Now there is some uh, recovery here, some smart money is slowly getting into the stock at this point. Now let's look at a you know 10 day 30 minute chart. As you look at this 10 day 30 minute chart, I do see some stabilization, although it's too early to call it, but I do see at least the line is flattening at this point. Um, and if you look at the implied wall, implied wall is trying to pick up a little bit, um, not too much. If you look at the DMI chart, DMI chart, I think it barely, the blue line barely crossed the red line, which is a bullish, bullish indicator uh, in a 10 day, 30 minute chart. It's showing at least some signs of life here. I think that it's, uh, you know, uh, at least that's the good news here. Um, on the balance volume is flattening, you know, it's really um, kind of flat here. Check in money flow, uh, indicating smart money is now slowly um, pouring into the stock which is very typical in these type of crash scenarios. Many of these big uh, hedge fund managers, 
and even some smart investors they will wait to see um, you know market or the stock stabilizing a little bit before they jump in uh, unless they're contrarian so in this scenario clearly money is flowing into the stock as stock is becoming a little more stable next let's look at five day five minute chart as you look at five day five minute chart here you can see um, more flattening and maybe if you really squint very hard you know slightly bullishness you know stock is kind of trying to make way up but it's not very evident here and rsi relative strength index you can see it's uh, really picking up some steam here uh, which is a you know good news and implied wall you know nothing to it's really flatlining to down here and you know dmi it's showing some bullishness here in a five day five minute chart the blue line is clearly above the red line which is a good sign and volume average is also showing some um, nice uh, uptick here a little bit uptick here and smart money is flowing into the stock check-in money flow is showing some you know um, uptick here which is a good story so from a technical perspective at least by looking at the smaller duration 10 minute chart and 5 minute chart i can see you know stock is trying to bounce at this point that's the reason i i, I bought some uh, today and yesterday if stock you know continues to fall a little bit i will be buying more one way to understand understand you know is really stock fell so hard last couple of days now if you see today um, as of uh, this recording, it dropped 23 cents. So it's really showing some stabilization. It's not crashing hard at this point, but it's kind of stabilizing. So with that, uh, let's go into option chain here to see what we can make out here. Uh, stock price is uh, 18.55 um, and um, that's somewhere here, 17.5. Um, and if you look at the open interest here, um, I think it's a uh, you know good amount you know we have a lot of open interest at uh, 20 we got a lot of open interest at uh, 30 again um, and you know here again at uh, 40 overall I feel you know there is a lot of open interest at 20 meaning you know people are really uh, hoping stock will bounce off of these levels and reach um, 20 or more by September um, so I think you know uh, that's a you know bullish indication the people are really betting the stock will go up and if you look at the put side of the house you know there is some put at 17.5 which is just a dollar off of current uh, levels um, uh, so and as you can see your put volume is relatively slow if you uh, relatively low if you compare the put volume to the call volume you can clearly see call volume is higher and the put volume is literally lower so that's why people are not betting this stock will fall further down so which is which is good now if you go into um, you know the option statistics in thinkorswim you can clearly see we have 10,000 co contracts for the calls whereas we have only 673 contracts for the put so call volume is clearly much greater than put volume that's why put call ratio is 0 0.64 that is showing me you know people are really betting the stock will go up there are more option traded than you know uh, call options traded than put options that's a bullish indication uh, now if you look at uh, you know with all this fundamental analysis and technical analysis what should we do now you know fibrogen stock has plummeted you know um, after hours on tuesday because there is a you know murky disclosure on the Ro Roxa Dustat, um, and this this uh, drug may not be as effective, and this co company might have um, manipulated the data around the safety. And now company is saying this drug is not superior uh, to another drug called Epiotin. So that's why, you know, this was supposed to be a good drug. People trusted it, but now it's not so great drug, which is a very bad setback. And also people are now questioning, um, you know, the, you know, the judgment of the company. How can they manipulate the data? These are biotechnology companies. They're trying to help people um, with the rare diseases. How can they themselves manipulate the data? This will really raise some concerns. And company did issue, issue some... Um, statement saying hey they are look investigating they are making sure this does not happen again 
there are some good indications there. But again, once uh, somebody does a mistake, there is always doubt in folks' mind, hey, you know what, will, it, will this repeat again? And by looking at the fundamentals and technicals, in the fundamentals we saw this company has got you know, not so great history when it comes to earning uh, uh, quarterly earnings. They miss a lot of times. And we also, um, you know, saw, you know, whenever they miss badly, um, they crash. But after crashing, the stock always bounces back. And we also discovered this is the greatest crash for this stock in last, uh, you know, 5-10 years. So with that in mind, I think this stock is clearly oversold. It's a very good buying opportunity. You could buy some at this point and stock will bounce back nicely in a month or two or three and you can take some off the table. So that's one of the good way to invest in these type of biotechnology stocks because these guys are after novel diseases and there are a lot of setbacks because they have to go through multiple clinical stages and they have to go through the approval process. You know, you always don't get a green signal all the time. With that, I feel, you know, Fibrogen is a good stock to invest in this, you know, downturn. Um, as smart money is following the stock, you could also buy some stock and then, uh, you know, um, sell when it uh, comes back up again. With that, thank you very much. Happy investing.